Hello. Today I would like to demonstrate some of the functions of the bifilar pancake coil um, which I have here. I want to go through how to measure this pancake coil and how to understand the power distribution within this pancake coil to give you a clearer idea about what it actually does and how it actually works. I'd like to give you an overview of the coil. We have 54 windings um, on this coil, that means 27 for red and for black for each coil. All coils are connected in series with a resistor of 100 ohm and parallel to the resistor is an LED load connected on the input side and on the output side. Very important for the measurement not to connect any terminal ground to any part of this coil because that influences the coil characteristics completely. I will go forward to the next step, we establishing the resonance frequency of this coil as we do it with a Tesla coil but just connecting only the source cable to the input side of this coil and nothing else. So we have on the source side here are my LEDs for you to identify that the, uh, the energy is then accepted by the load and the LED is illuminated. So O, so this LED is marking the input side or the out, outer side of the coil or the source side and I marks the um, LED across the resistor on the inside of the coil. We're starting at 10 kilohertz and I scroll up we are at 1.13 volt RMS currently and as I go up as you can see nothing changes because the impedance of the coil does not change that means the amplitude of the wave does not increase. This is from LCR that is your standard behavior of a coil that at has resonant frequencies, the, the resistance or the impedance is highest and therefore the amplitude voltage uh, um, increases um, to a very high level. So at 1 megahertz um, we are still at 1.12 volt. I increase further, now a bit faster and increases slowly and let me zoom out for you um, here that you can see it easier. I'm at 5.4 megahertz and we have 2.3, 2.4 volt RMS on the scope. I scroll up slowly. We are at 6.3, 6.4. So 6.4 megahertz is my final um, resonant frequency. I measure 3.8 volt RMS on the oscilloscope, bear in mind that is with measuring the two loads, the two times 100 ohm resistor in the coil. That means the complete coil um, plus the load becomes one system and you have to measure it as such. That's very important. If you measure in the future your coil systems and you want to drive a load, you have to do the measurement with the load. We start at 10 kilohertz and see that both um, LED lights are illuminated. So that means at this frequency, this coil is not creating anything of um, uh, resistance in terms of resonance. That actually both LEDs are illuminated nicely. The changes only when we change it in frequencies that we have a different behavior between current and um, voltage. So at that level when both are uh, now not working anymore, that means they're not, that LED light is not illuminated anymore, we are at 180 kilohertz. What we can see right away here is that on source 1 and source 3 we have here a lacking current which is not good for power uh, transition or transformation and on the other side 
we have the same way we have a lagging current we need a leading current in order for us to um, take advantage of the power available the values here already are good values we can see from current and from voltage however it is not good enough because they are aligned in a wrong phase angle to each other ideally there should be 19 degree leading the current to the voltage let's go further up I will make that a bit quicker so we go to the half half of the frequency to see that we go something so we have some strong values here we, we are almost at resonant frequency we have 4 to 7 um, megahertz let me zoom that out so we have interesting we have for voltage and for current they're completely aligned and as you can see they behave exactly in the same way there is no difference in this coil between input and output side or, and so on and that is reflected here also in the load both LEDs are illuminated if I go further up now to the resonance frequency we had before measured let's do that then we see things change so at 6.46 it's close to the resonance frequency I see only the source illuminated that was the resonance frequency I, I measured before let me align that so we see again here um, voltage is aligned current is aligned on source 1 the current is leading as it should be how does it look like on source input source it's leading as well but it doesn't take advantage and that must have something to do with the inside resistance however we don't see that here we see the phase angle how that works but we don't see the actual resistance inside the system at the moment from a wave point of view it looks like it's completely um, um, almost close I see actually that the values between um, the coil the inside coil and the current is a very good value however the load because it's unidirectional can't take advantage of that it's probably not working that way let me zoom a little bit go a little bit up in the frequency and here it starts let me do that very gentle here it starts here we have the transition period when it moves out Let's see if we can see that current and voltage both work the same and even if it dis disappears it stays that way that means even if our values are very low our load is very much illuminated and doesn't really reflect what we see here directly on the scope so that makes it complicated because that means it doesn't give us 100% idea of what is going on here in this coil but we see the shift between voltage side and current and again here at 20, 20 20.3 megahertz I'm on input side very strong that's one and blue and on the inside it gets strong stronger here and again here my current is leading as it should be let's look here on that side and here and that is conclusive it is lacking that's why this load is not as strong illuminated here as it is on the input side if we 
if you see that now if if it moves it moves over into leading and that is visible here as well if it goes back into lagging it's visible here it disappears the values are very high but you can't take advantage of this alignment between current and voltage it's no good at all that can be changed with different kind of LCR impedance matching systems to align that I will um, produce a specific video about how to optimize it in, in for, for such a coil in uh, with various components to take advantage of current and so on as we see here but one thing is for sure there's always energy going into this coil which will be dissipated um, but the input output side based on the phase angle to current to voltage and so on will vary they can be aligned but at, a, um, at this point I have to say there is no magic as such existing and that's all based on the laws we know today for LCR networks. Thank you.